Cash. How are you today? Are you ready to visit with some friends? Oh, I'm so glad. Hi, I'm Dell, and this is Cash, and we are a therapy team with Fox Valley Therapy Dog Club. We are so glad to be with you today. We're going to share a little bit about what it takes to be a therapy dog and tell you a little bit about Cash. So we're glad that you could join us today. Um, first of all, um, I wanted to let you know that Cash is a four-year-old German short-haired pointer. They are usually a hunting dog, um, but Cash is more of a lover than a hunter, so we decided that therapy would be a really good thing for him to do. He is our own family dog, so my husband and I, my daughter, he is our very own dog. We picked Cash out when he was five weeks old. He was very, very little, and we picked him up when he was seven weeks old, and he's been with us ever since. Um, We've done most of our training at Fox Valley um, Dog Training Club here in Illinois, in Kane County. And Cash took a puppy class, an advanced puppy class, and a tricks class there. Um, other things that we do is I train him on my own. Um, so we spend a lot of time training outside in our basement, wherever we can get a spot. Um, just tra training basic things and sometimes we train tricks and sometimes we train obedience type things. Um, we decided to try to be a therapy team about a year and a half ago and we looked and found Fox Valley Therapy Dog Club. We joined um, in I want to say July of 2018 and we took our first test uh, to become a therapy dog team in October of 2018 and unfortunately we did not pass so we had to rework some things and retrain some things with both Cash and I and then we went back and we took a test again in August of 2019 and we passed and so we have been doing therapy visits ever since. Cash has done over 75 therapy visits but some of the people in our club have done 700-800 visits um, so we are just getting started and every time we go on a therapy visit we learn something new so we like to to share what we know with you and what we've learned um, from just being a therapy dog team and share with you a little bit more about what a therapy dog does and where we go and some of the differences between something you've probably heard of a therapy dog like cash or a service dog um, service dogs are very different they are trained for a specific task so you might see a service dog help someone with diabetes or someone with a seizure disorder or someone who is blind or someone who suffers from anxiety. You may see a service dog at the airport um, working with police officers to make sure that we're safe when we're getting on a plane to travel. You can also see service dogs as canines, those dogs who are especially trained to work with police or with the military. A lot of times these dogs might be bomb sniffers or drug sniffers. Um, so they help keep law and order. Those dogs, service dogs, um, because they're assigned to a very specific task, and usually when we see them, they are working, we don't want to approach those dogs. Um, they have been, like I said, especially trained for a special task, and it's not good to approach those dogs. Even if you ask the handler, um, usually that's not a good idea because that dog is always focused, always working, and always focused on their one person. And we don't really want to take the focus off of that. When a dog is doing a job, they're doing a very important job. And we don't want to take the focus off of them um, thinking and being alert for their owner or trainer. Now, a therapy dog is quite different. Therapy dogs are trained um, not only in obedience because we want them to follow rules, but also just to be kind. It takes a special dog and a special temperament of a dog um, to be a therapy dog. You want a dog who can sit for long periods, who can control themselves, who don't jump. I know sometimes those of you who have pets, when that doorbell rings, our dogs bark and they jump and it just gets crazy. And we need a dog that doesn't uh, get annoyed by loud noises or by a lot of activity. A dog that can be handled by a lot of different people. Um, Cash is, is trained so that people can pet him and he just lays back and enjoys it. And sometimes the people we visit haven't been around dogs, so they don't necessarily know how to be um, appropriate with a dog. So they might pull Cash's ears, they could pull his little tiny tail back here, they could treat him kind of rough, and we wouldn't want a dog to react to anything like that. We would want um, the person who's visiting with Cash to be safe. So we want Cash to be trained so that even if somebody tugs on his ear a little bit too hard, 
he's not going to be um, reactive to that. Now, as his owner and his teammate, I don't want that to happen to Cash. I don't want somebody to pull his ear or pull his tail or treat him meanly. So it's my responsibility to, sh to make sure that Cash is safe all the time. Now, that might be um, doing something like this where I'm teaching somebody how to approach Cash and how to pet him nicely. And we can do that no matter who we're with. So no matter where we go, and we go to a lot of different places, we want to make sure that Cash is safe, that he's happy, and that he enjoys doing his visits. That's the most important thing. We want to make sure that Cash enjoys doing these visits, and he enjoys treats a lot. So that helps a lot, too. So anyway, so uh, Cash and I failed our first test, and, and I want to say we, we did it as a team because I was very nervous, and Cash was pretty much doing everything that I asked him to, but because I was nervous, it kind of goes right down that lead to him and he can feel that I'm nervous and that makes him nervous. So one of the things that um, they told us we were doing wrong is that Cash was pulling on his leash. We don't want a therapy dog to be over eager or pull or look like he's not in control at any time. So I had to spend that year before our second test teaching Cash and I how to walk nicely back together. So that is a, a task called healing. You've probably heard of that. But that's a task where Cash and I walk together as a team. He doesn't pull me. I don't have to pull him from behind. And that we walk nicely. We want to we want to leave a good impression when we're with um, friends at a therapy visit. So we want to make sure we do things well. So we worked on that for about a year before we went back and took our test. So I want to tell you right now that anytime you don't do well on a test, um, you want to work at it and you want to see what you did wrong and you want to try again because the benefits of us doing therapy visits far outweighs the time that we have to, to spend um, working and, and testing um, so that we can come and visit you. So it was very important to us to pass that second test. So <clears throat> um, some of the things, um, some of the places that we go, we go to elementary schools, we go to high schools, we go to uh, libraries memory care facilities, hospitals, cancer care, um, pretty much anywhere we're invited. And that brings me to another thing that's very different between a service dog and a therapy dog. A service dog can go anywhere that their owner goes, um, with very, very few exceptions. So if I needed to travel, I couldn't just get on a plane with cash. He's not a service dog for, that's providing me a service. Uh, therapy dogs have to be invited to go everywhere we go. So we are invited to go to elementary schools and to um, libraries and spend time with the kids. One of the programs we do is reading to Rover and we are welcomed into a library at that time. But we can't just walk into a school or into a shopping mall or a restaurant um, unless we're asked to be there for a specific reason. And another thing that's great about therapy dogs is we do want you to pet them often. Um, but with any dog, we want you to ask the owner before you approach the dog. It's always very, very important that you ask if you can pet the dog. So I would approach Cash, Cash and someone would say, can I pet your dog? And I would say, absolutely, you may. You want to give him your hand, let him sniff it. Good job, Cash. And then once he knows that you're a friend, you can give him a good pet. And he loves it. He loves being pet. So we just want to approach a dog safely and we want to approach a dog with the owner's um, approval, okay? So that's very, very important. So um, some of the things that Cash had to be able to do to pass his therapy dog test is he had to lay down like he is now and sit for quite a bit of time before he's allowed to get up. Now you can see that's something that Cash very, very much enjoys because he likes sitting with his friends and reading at the libraries and the schools. So that is very, very fun for him. Another thing is that he'll follow commands. So Cash, can you come up here and sit? Good job. Do you hear how, see how he's looking at me all the time? He's looking to find out what the next command is and he knows that I'm in charge. Okay, so one thing might be to make Cash stay somewhere. So I'm going to say stay and you'll see that I used a word and a hand motion, stay Cash. And I can walk away, or I should be able to walk away from Cash and get a little closer to you. And Cash stays exactly where he's at. Good boy. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to reward him. Um, as soon as Cash learns to do a particular task, I don't have to reward him every time, but sometimes rewards are fun. So we slip a little reward in there every now and then. Um, one thing would be leave it. 
when we're at these places, there could be food, maybe you just had a party in your classroom, or we're in a hospital and somebody drops a medication or a pill. Uh, we don't want our dogs to, um, to touch something and inadvertently eat it that could hurt them. So we might tell them to leave it. So I'm gonna take one of Cash's treats that he absolutely loves. I'm gonna put it on the ground and I'm gonna tell him to leave it. All right, Cash, leave it. And Cash is gonna watch me to find out when he can have that treat, leave it. He really wants it, Cashy, watch. Okay, get it. Now this was something safe for Cash to have so I let him have it, but did you see that he did not go for the treat when I told him to leave it? And that's very important that he's listening to me um, in that kind of situation. Another thing is that he wants to be calm. When we go on a therapy visit, Cash is not always the only dog. I'm gonna let him lay down while I talk a little bit. Down, good boy. Uh, Cash is not always the only dog at a therapy visit. Sometimes four or five teams come. And when that happens, we try to be outside first so our dogs can say hi to each other and sniff each other and, and get that out of their system so that when we're with people, we're focused on the people that we're servicing. We don't want our therapy dogs to be too interested in the dog next to them. We want them to be more focused on you and what they're doing to make you happy and smile. So of course we don't want them only focused on the dogs they're with. So before we go on a visit, we let the dogs mingle and then we go in for our visit. That gives them a little time to get to know who's there and uh, get a little bit of visiting out of their system. And then when they're working, they're working. So that's very important. And the other thing that I talked to you about was walking. We wanna make sure that when Cash is on his lead, he's walking right next to me and staying near me the whole time. And another important thing that they need to do when we're testing is I need to hand Cash by giving his lead to, to someone who's there, I need to do that tell him to stay and I need to walk away for five minutes. Now it's okay for Cash to stand up during that time or even walk around while he's with the other person. But when I come back in the room, he can't be super excited to see me. He can be happy to see me, of course, but he can't pull the person. He can't run towards me or lunge towards me. He has to still act appropriate because he's still in a therapy setting until I get back to him. So that's just a couple of the things that uh, Cash needed to do to pass this test. So once we passed our test, we went on some visits to see how Cash reacted and we passed those visits and then we started to be able to go to some of the places that asked for Fox Valley Therapy Club to come and visit. And like I said before, those are schools, hospitals, um, cancer centers, special events. And we do it because we love it. We love seeing you. We love it when our dogs bring a smile to your face. Um, nothing makes us happier, so that's why we do it. Um, also, I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about Cash and the other things that he learns to do. Like I told you that he'd gone to Fox Valley Dog Training Club and he went to some classes there and those were very, very helpful. But believe it or not, <clears throat> a lot of the things Cash does, we learn on YouTube. That's right, kids. We do watch a lot of YouTube to get tricks for Cash. And we might research a particular um, trick for him to do and then we have to um, work on it and we might look at different methods to see which method works best with Cash. Um, but that's a great place for us to learn lots of tricks for Cash to do to make people happy. So just a couple of things we're gonna do, we're gonna show you a couple of the things Cash can do. And then some other things are on our YouTube channel. Um, uh, you just search for Fox Valley Therapy Dog Club on YouTube and we have lots of videos of Cash doing his tricks there. So Cash, can you sit up? Good boy, good job. Now, when Cash can't catch something, it's usually because I threw it wrong, but we're gonna try this. I'm gonna see, Cash, you've got your eyes on me. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, he tipped it. Again, that was me, it wasn't right in front of his nose. Let's see if we can do it one more time. One, two, three. And when I train Cash something to do something, I always wanna praise him, whether he gets the trick right or not. That was a really good try, Cash. And we're gonna try one more time, see if you can catch it. One, two, three. Good boy, that was fantastic. It doesn't help if I were to um, be mean or harsh with Cash if he doesn't do a trick right. He's trying hard, I'm trying hard, and if, I, um, if I'm mean to him or if I treat him poorly because he didn't do something I wanted him to do, then he's not gonna be likely to want to train with me, he's not gonna want to be joyful when he goes on his visits, so we wanna make sure that A, when we're training, we're always giving lots of wonderful praise to each other, even when it's my fault for throwing wrong, right? Um, and we always want to try to end a trick if we've been practicing the trick and it's not going well, we always wanna go back to a trick that he does do well so that he ends on a positive note. 
So that's always very, very, very important. So another thing Cash knows how to do, and you've seen him do that today, is down. And again, I can use a physical um, motion for him, or I can also say down. So this time I'm not gonna say the word, I'm just gonna use my finger. And Cash knows what to do. Good job, buddy. All right, can you sit up, Cash? All right, I want you to go around over here so everybody can see you. Good job. Can I have a paw? Fantastic. Can I have the other paw? Oh, beautiful, Cash. Great job. We're going to try sit pretty. Good job. That really helps him work on his core. How about a high five? Oh, good boy. I love high fives. That was fantastic. Okay, and one thing that Cash absolutely loves to do is he loves to jump. So we taught him a trick called touch, and you can teach your own dogs this, and we have videos on how to do that, but basically you can take a post-it note and hold it in front of your dog, and dogs are curious, so as soon as they touch that post-it note, you say the word touch, okay? So you would say touch when you hold that in front of him, and let's see if we can get Cash to do that. We're gonna take a little sample of something over here. I'm gonna hold it in front of him, and dogs are curious, so whether they lick it or touch it with their nose, you're gonna to wanna to say touch, good job. Good job, Cash, fantastic. And then as your dog gets used to that, you want it up here, touch. Touch, good boy. And you can take it further or further away. Now when you're done using a piece of paper to lure your dog and they're getting really, really good at that command, you can start using your hand. So we're gonna share this with, with you on how Cash has progressed with the trick touch. Cash, touch. Good boy, we have slippery floors and he's on a blanket so he's trying his best not to fall when he does touch. Can we try it again, Cash? Touch. Good boy. It's one of his favorite things to do and it is a crowd pleaser when we do it. Um, another thing that Cash has learned how to do, come here, Cash, can you come around here? Good boy. Cash does not like to roll over. We get that question a lot. He's a bigger dog and it doesn't, it's not something fun for him to do to roll over. So that's not something he enjoys. But we have learned to do a command called bow. So Cash, can you stand up? And come in. Oh, I know you want to please me. So you're going to try everything. That's a sit pretty. Good boy. But you need to stand, stand, and then bow. Bow. Good boy, that was a very good bow. Well, we've shared a lot of information with you today and we're so glad that you joined us. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about what a therapy dog does. There's over 35 to 40 teams at Fox Valley Therapy Dog Club. Um, we have dogs that are German Shepherds, who are Terriers, Dachshunds. We have Greyhounds, we have Bulldogs. Any breed you can imagine can be a therapy dog if they have the right disposition. And um, many times, like I said, we work together, but when you work together with your dog and you train them well, anything is possible. So we want you to go out to our website at Fox Valley Therapy Dogs. It's F-V-T-H-E-R-A-P-Y-D-O-G-S dot org. And you can find out about our organization, or like I said, look up Fox Valley Therapy Dog Club on YouTube and you can see more of our videos. Again, we're so happy you joined us today and we're gonna show you our appreciation by doing a wave. Can we do a wave, Cash? Can you look at our friends and wave? Bye-bye everyone and thanks for joining us.